हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ फाइव फोर डेप्थ कैलकुलेशन वी ऑलरेडी हैव क्रिएटेड पार्ट वन वेर इन वी डिस्कस फाइव फोर डेप्थ कैलकुलेशन बट अंडर वेरी सिंपल कंडीशन इन पार्ट टू आई विल गिव यू अ प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट विच विल बी लिटल बिट कॉम्प्लीकेटेड एज कंपेयर टू द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट गिवन इन पार्ट वन वन मोर थिंग फ्रेंड्स इट इज वेरी कॉमनली आज इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन इट इज आज एट द फ्रेशर लेवल एंड इवन एट द एक्सपीरियंस लेवल Now let us get started. Let's assume that we have two modules in a system, module A and module B. Module A is working at low frequency and module B is working at comparatively high frequency. Now when module A is sending data to module B, our writing speed is very low and our reading speed is very high so in this case we don't need any sort of memory buffer in the middle simple sort of uh, flip flop based synchronizer will be enough to synchronize between two modules but when module b is transmitting data to module a our writing speed is very high because it is operating at very high frequency and our reading speed is very slow because frequency of module a is very low now in this case we have to put some sort of memory buffer so that module b and module a can be synchronized but in this case also our data should not be continuous it should be in the form of burst let us assume that our data is continuous at one point of time this memory buffer will also become full and we will lost all the data thereafter so data should be always in the form of burst now if i give you the frequency of module a and frequency of module b along with the burst size you can calculate fifo depth as we saw in part 1 but in this uh, video we have introduced one level of complexity that is insertion of idle cycles between the two successive reads and two successive writes let us see its example let us say the frequency of module a is 20 megahertz and frequency of module b is 200 megahertz and our burst size is 100 bytes now one more thing one clock cycle delay between two successive reads and writes so there is one clock cycle delay between two successive reads and writes this is the complexity that is added to our problem statement now let us calculate the fifo depth friends in the very first step you have to calculate the time taken to write one data byte so we know module b takes two clock cycles to write one data byte because one cycle is idle and the time period of the clock is 1 by fb and the total time for two clock cycles is 2 into 1 by fb so 2 by 200 megahertz because fb is 200 megahertz so if we calculate it, it will become 10 nanosecond so time taken to write one data byte is 10 nanosecond now the second step we have to calculate the time taken to write the entire burst we know the burst size and time taken to write one data byte so we have to multiply both of them so burst size is 100 and we know we need 10 nanosecond to write one data byte so multiply it by 10 so it will become 1000 nanosecond so we will be able to write the complete burst in 1000 nanoseconds now the third step we have to calculate the time taken to read one data byte we know module a takes two clock cycle to read data because one cycle is idle and the time period of frequency of module a is 1 by fa so the total time of two clock cycle it will be 2 into 1 by fa so 2 by 20 megahertz because the frequency of module a is 20 megahertz so it will become 100 nanosecond so we are able to read one data byte in 100 nanosecond now in the fourth step you have to calculate data read during burst writing so we know we are able to write the complete burst in 1000 nanosecond and we know in 100 nanosecond we are able to read one data byte so let us calculate how 
many data bytes we will be able to read during the burst writing so 1000 nanosecond by 100 nanosecond it will become 10 now let us calculate the buffer size we know the burst size and we have to subtract data read during the burst so burst size is 100 and data read during the burst write is 10 so the buffer size will be 90 because when the burst writing is over still 90 more data bytes are left that need to be stored somewhere so we need a buffer size to store 90 bytes so that module a can read them safely friend let us see one more example quickly in this case frequency of module a is fa which is equal to 50 megahertz and frequency of module b is 80 megahertz and burst size in this case is 120 bytes and the complexity level number of idle cycle between two successive writes is 1 and number of idle cycle between two successive reads is 3 that means we have reduced the reading speed further now again we use the same steps to calculate the FIFO depth now the very first step I told you we have to calculate time taken to write one data byte now as we know that module B takes two clock cycles to write one data byte because one clock cycle is idle and we know the time period of one clock cycle it is 1 by fb and the time of two clock cycle is 2 into 1 by fb so 2 by 80 megahertz because the frequency of module b is 80 megahertz it will become 25 nanosecond now the second step we have to calculate the time taken to write the entire bust so in this case we have to multiply bus size into time taken to write one data byte so bus size is 120 and time taken to write one data byte is 25 nanosecond so 120 into 25 it will become 3000 nanoseconds so in 3000 nanosecond we will be able to write the complete bust now the third step in the third step we have to calculate the time taken to read one data byte we know module a will take four clock cycles to read one data byte because three clock cycles are idle and the time period of one clock cycle of frequency of module a is one by fa and the time of four clock cycle it will be four into one by fa so four by 50 megahertz because the frequency of module a is 50 megahertz so it will be 80 nanosecond so we will be able to read one data byte in 80 nanosecond now let us calculate data read during burst writing so burst writing takes 3000 nanoseconds and time taken to read one data byte is 80 nanosecond so let us divide 3000 nanosecond by 80 nanosecond and it will come 37.5 but we will uh, round it off and we will take 37 to be on the safe side take the least one don't take 38 now the buffer size will be equal to bus size minus data read during the bus write. So buffer size is 120 minus 37. So buffer size will be 83. Friends, with this I am going to end this video and I hope that it would be quite informative for all of you. Friends, one more thing. We will add some more complexity to the write and read phases and then we will see how to calculate the FIFO depth. So one request from my side, those who have not subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it because we are going to make many such videos in future. And for the notification of videos, don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching.